How do you find a great beer? Well, I can ask my friends, I can watch this show, I can read about it, or I can just pick this up. What don't women like about the world of beer? Glenn and I are gonna to try to talk about it without mansplaining. It is also a little less carbonated. I like to think of it as beer in its more pure form. Wow, thank you. Coming up, you'll learn more about the number one rated beer pub in America by the readers of USA Today. I'm looking forward to that, all of that, and more from the Yingling Brewing Company in Pottsville, PA. This is What's Brewing. What's Brewing? Brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tours and Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board. Hi, and welcome to What's Brewing. He's noted beer authority, Joe Sixpack. I'm noted beer drinker, Glenn Macnow. And today, we drove the scenic Schuylkill River, as the leaves are changing, yes. out to Pottsville, Pennsylvania, the home of Yingling Brewing Company, the oldest brewery in America. We are delighted to be here. We start, as always, with our beer swap. And here's what I brought you today, Joe Sixpack, from Funk Brewing in Emmaus, PA, silent disco New England uh, IPA. You know I love yep, the New England Pale Ales. This is a 6.8% APV. Here's what I learned, by the way. I thought Funk Brewing was so named just because it was funky and it was yeah, fun. Yeah. The guy who runs it is named Funk, Kyle Funk. Who knew? Well, Funk has been around for a little while. They're sort of, you know, one of the new breweries, but they've been, they have a little bit of cred behind them making a lot of interesting beers. I know people line up for their beers sometimes. It's, it's, it's a good little beer. Boy, it's got a really good, as you would say, it's got oh. a really good nose to yeah, it. It's wow. pretty powerful wow. stuff. It smells yeah. great. Like it very much. Of course, it's cloudy like any uh, typical New England style IPA. It's a very strong New England IPA. I, I, I like this one. High grades for me for the Funk Silent Disco. Silent Disco. Yeah, it's good. Hmm. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Well, it means what? that you don't have to listen to it, I think. Yeah, well, and Disco, <laughs> that's good. What'd you bring me? All right. This is from Appalachian Brewing. Mm -hmm. This is their Scottish style ale. Uh, this is a style of beer, Glenn, you just don't see very much from the brewers anymore. What, so yeah, what is a Scottish ale? Define well, that for me. It's hard to define because there's, there's, there's Scottish ale. I'm sorry, don't stop from pouring though, right, as, you, right. as you define. There's a, so as you'll see, this is sort of an amber looking beer. Scotch ale is yeah. a little bit stronger and darker. Uh -huh. This is, uh, I believe they call this an 80 shilling ale, which, you know, it, it has to do with the, the amount of alcohol and the, the way the beer was made. But it's a sort of, a, think just malt when you drink this you beer. You know, I've never, I like it, it is malty. That's exactly the, the, the word I would use. I've never had their beer, but I think they make craft sodas, and I think I've had their root beer. Really? Yeah. Well, you know what? There is sort of like a root beerishy kind of thing to this beer. Out of Harrisburg? Where are they? Where are they well, they they have several locations in and around Philadelphia as well, uh, but basically, I think their their home is near Harrisburg in the Lancaster area. Hey, you know what I just realized? You, Joe Sixpack, drove us out here today, so. I get to drink as much as I want. I don't have to worry about driving home. Hold it. We, Stay sober, my friend. Yeah, we drove out here uh, for to the middle of uh, Schuylkill County, and of mm -hmm. course, I used my Google map to get us here. Yeah. Phones are uh, indispensable when it comes to driving and for drinking beer these days because there's plenty of great beer apps out there that help you find the best beer. Brand new one from the Brewers of Pennsylvania, which is Pennsylvania's Brewers Guild. They've produced the Digital Ale Trail app, and it's oh, yeah. a Brew, it's an app that allows you to find the next closest brewery to you and tells you a little bit about the beers. It's really super. I've been using it a little bit. You can check into breweries. It's pretty cool. Great idea. Let me give you a few I like. Of course, one that uh, we use similar 
to that is the Monco Makers app, info on all of the 20 plus breweries in Montgomery County. Now, one that I have always enjoyed just for the fun of it is this, let me find it on my phone. <laughs> it is called iBeer Free, and it is just simply this. It's not even an app, it's just a goof. Ooh, it fills up. Hold on, I gotta turn on the sound. There we go. Wait for the finish. There we go. High right. class stuff. Virtual beer. <laughs> All right. So that aside, one I use that we've talked before when we used to do the podcast is called Pairwise. I really like this because what this does is it helps you pair beer and food. So you either type in a food that you want to eat or a beer, just a style or a specific. Let's try it. Let's uh, give me a food you want to try. All right, try. I'm going to try to stay healthy today. All Let's right. go for a veggie burger. All right, so I'm typing in veggie burger. There we go. I got it. Now, it says with a veggie burger, it would recommend one of three styles. Okay. Would you like an, an American Pale Ale, an IPA, or a farmhouse Saison? Right, let's go with the Saison. All right, you're a Saison guy. There you go. If you want to keep it local, it's got the local thing, so it knows we're in Pottsville. Right. I put my locator on. Uh, you want to try a French-Belgian style Saison. It recommends that you try... Don't drink beer and try this at home, people. No, no. Saison <laughs> uh, Ale from Yards, Springhouse Brewing Company's Rick, Sly Fox Brewing Saison VOS, or Joey from Springhouse Brewing. So it yeah. will really recommend a good local beer. And actually, beer to those try are all it. sort of local beers, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Wherever yeah. you are, you can use it. So you can do it by going to the beer, you can do it by going to the kind of food you're eating, whatever you want to do. Pretty good stuff. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk about election day and what that means for beer. My advice, start drinking heavily. <laughs> He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now from uh, Yingling Brewing Company in Pottsville. This is What's Brewing. Why walk when you can fly? Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. We are here in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, and you are about to find out what makes this place so special. So we are at the number one beer pub in America. Can you tell us how it became that way? Uh, we were nominated by USA Today, along with 19 other uh, craft beer bars in the country. Um, and then voting was open for about a month or two. You could monitor like who was winning and who was in the lead, and it was going back and forth between us and this great pub in New Orleans called the Avenue Pub. And then the last week, they don't let you see the results, so everyone's in the dark. I got an email from our general manager stating that you know we had won. Okay. I mean, we're lucky, like we're fortunate being in Lidditz. It's, it's a lot of. It's a, amazingly supportive community, um, a lot of great beer drinkers. And it's continually voted coolest, was it coolest small town in America? Coolest small town in America from various publications. Right. Um, one point we were number one, then we were number four, but we're always in the conversation for top ten. So Yeah, it's a cute town. Cool. Yeah. It's fun to walk around. Yeah, a bunch of little shops, all independently owned. So what would you say is the number one draw to this Lit, it's the town brings a bunch of people in, a lot of tourists, there's a lot of things around us. You know, honestly, I think it comes down to our ambiance and being a little different and being a little left of center, um, our staff and the beer. And you want to talk a little bit about the decor here? So you were saying it's all imported, is it from England and stuff? Yeah, so our former owner's from Liverpool and uh, he's the one that started Bull's Head and he also has another company that sells English decor to uh, different pubs. And so all the decor in here, with the exception of the curtains in the lounge, is all imported from England. <coughs> Bull's Head Pub's connected to the General Sutter Inn. The original part of the General Sutter Inn dates back to 1764. It was always an inn. So how do you keep to the true English style of the pub? Um, you know, it's kind of difficult, you know, um, being in the U.S. and trying to implement, 
European ways. Most people at this point in the game like have been coming here long enough or have been here a few times that they know how we operate. And how do you select the beer that you have? What's your process? Well, it's sort of listening to customers, seeing you know, like seeing what's selling, hearing what people want. Uh, but we also have designated lines, so we always have a stout on. We always have a wheat beer, a lager, an IPA, a double IPA, uh, true Belgian beer, and some English beers as well. Um, primarily because you know everyone wants different things. You know, if you're Johnny anybody and you don't really care about craft beer, but your friends are coming here and you want a beer, um, you know we can point you in the right direction. It can be fun, and you, we've opened a lot of windows and a lot of minds to uh, what people are drinking now. So that's kind of half the fun of the job. Is I don't want to say converting the masses, but educating them a little bit. Yeah, so. helping them try something new. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think of the whole craft beer movement and what's happening in the industry? You're going to get a lot of varied responses on that. I think my personal opinion is uh, it's gone from like, it's separated from like beer nerds and beer fans. And like beer fans are the kind of people that they love beer. They love the art of brewing it. They love talking about it. They love trying new beers like from around the world, around their area. And then you have these beer nerds that are coming in. And obviously they help my business as well. I, I still sell beers catered to them. But a lot of people are sh going after white whales. You have a bunch of really great breweries, especially in Pennsylvania. Um, they're staying true to what they're doing. They're brewing a variety. And some of the things are getting overlooked. And you can, I can hand somebody, uh, for instance, uh, I can hand somebody a Yards Brawler out of Philadelphia and be like, this is a great mild. Like, you should try this. Be like, no, that's garbage. And it's just like being open-minded towards it. And uh, I just think we sort of lost that edge a little bit. There's plenty of good beers out there. You just have to look for them. Do you think that's part of what made your pub so successful, is this variety that you try to keep Yeah, on? because, you know, first of all, I mean, we do, well, we do a very good job of educating our staff. Um, we never want people to feel uncomfortable. I mean, we sell Miller Lite by the bottle. We sell Budweiser, Stella, all that. And if you order a Miller Lite, no one's going to, like, scoff at you. It's fine. Miller Lite's my number one selling bottle. But you can drink Miller Lite at any other bar, and you're choosing to drink it here. Like, to me, that says a lot. Thank you, Sierra. That seems great. I gotta get there. I have yeah. not been there. It's fun town, great place. Totally, absolutely. Uh, great town. Today we're here at Yingling Brewery in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, where in the men's room they got an autographed picture of Chuck Bednarik. Wow. And you can get your Yingling football. So that's pretty good too. All right, let's talk about. We talked about Election Day a couple of uh, weeks ago, a couple episodes ago. It draws closer and. There are beer connections. Right. Well, it used to be that saloons had to close on election day, uh, but there's been a move afoot to actually go the other way. Let's just declare a big national holiday for uh, on election day, and this is being pushed by the Blue Point Brewery up in New York. Shut down business, go vote, and then go drink a beer. I like that. Now, Love City uh, in New York is giving away free 10-ounce beer to anybody who registers to vote in Actually, the tap room. Love City in Philadelphia. Oh, Phil oh yeah. Love City. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah, exactly. yes. Shame on me. Uh, I'm thinking New York. There are New York, a bunch of New York bars where if you come in with your I Voted sticker, you will get a free beer. I think that's a great, great idea. idea. Great idea. Right? Um, and I will just tell you this. There's a campaign issue in Ontario right now where the premier, Doug Ford, you may remember his crazy brother, the mayor of Toronto, <laughs> yes. <laughs> is proposing a buck a beer. They have a law up there that you cannot charge less than $1.25 a beer. He wants to lower it to a buck a beer. You know, any politician running on lowering the price of beer is a, sure, is a shoe in I guess, yeah, you know what? I don't even know what else he stands for. Yeah, exactly. I'm voting for the Cheap guy. Beer. <laughs> All right, by the way, we are at Yingling drinking these Lord Chesterfield ales. I know you're partial to it. It's a, it's a I nice love them. They, locally, they call these Chetties. Chetties. Okay. <laughs> We've been doing our um, brew down, IPA brew down. We started with a field of 16. Where are we now, Joe? All right. Back. We finally got to the uh, eighth match up there. The final region was fit pitting two Philly favorites, which were Philadelphia Brewing's New Bold up against Maniunk Dreamin', two very oh, nice IPAs. That's, yeah, that's two good ones. It was a tough one. It was very close, but Maniunk takes that round and moves on to the next round where it'll face off in uh, against Yards, Cape of Good Hope in the first of the field of the eight. We've also got uh, Penn IPA up against Voodoo Hoodoo in the western region. 
Trogue's Nimble Giant versus Lancaster Hop Hog in the Central PA region, and Victory Dirt Wolf up against Neshaminy Creek Shape of Hops to Come in the Philly Burbs. What are the Vegas odds makers saying about this? Uh, it depends on what I guess they like. Okay, there you go. I like them all. Uh, anyway, coming up, we have an interesting topic that two old guys are certainly really equipped to talk about, which is why are they so bad at marketing beard to women? Yeah, we're authorities. Yes. We'll give you that. Coming up on What's Brew. We're back at Yingling Brewery here in Pottsville. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. Um, now, one of the issues with beer, guys love it. Women, not as much. Well, so they say. So they say. They've always had a tough time marketing beer to women. Let me give you a couple numbers, and right. I, I, I value your opinion on this, okay? 2016 Gallup poll said that beer is the preferred alcoholic beverage of 54% of men. Okay. 100% in this particular room. Yes. That might skew it. For sure. Only 23% of women rank it higher than wine or liquor. At the same time, studies show that women make more than 80% of the shopping decisions in the household. Yeah, I guess who gets to go to the grocery store. <laughs> right. So you've got to try to sell it to women. They've never done it well. Well, it has been an issue for so many years. I mean, you know, who doesn't remember those great, you know, old pinups of uh, Miss Rheingold and so on? Oh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you some yeah. of those. Much more recently, been even more sexist than that. I mean, really, beer has been a sexist kind of uh, product to sell. You sell it to men with, you know, a little TNA. All right, well, let me show you some of that, okay? Not always TNA. There is some of that, so don't go away. <laughs> um, but these are some ads that they have tried to use. I just got the print ads, not the commercials, to sell beer to women. This is one by Schlitz. This is from the 1960s. Some idiot overturns the canoe. Why he's steering a canoe in a tie and jacket, I don't know. <laughs> the woman is left there standing behind all wet and he says, don't worry, honey, it's okay. I saved the Schlitz. Right. You Could know. you be more demeaning to okay, women? but that's the 1960s, uh, all right? Well, here we, you go. We've progressed since then. Yeah, not really. 1980s, <laughs> this is Heineken. The funny thing is, you said you've seen this ad and never noticed it. Yeah. It says bottoms up. Do you see I'm anything totally, there, Joe Sixpack? I'm, I'm obtuse, okay, but now I do. Now that you okay. pointed it out to me. What are we selling there? Who knew that bottles looked that That's good? That's the long A and next? T and A, I and think. And then this is the one that really epitomizes what beer has been over the years, which this is the Coors Beer Twins. You had the Swedish bikini sure. team. You had the Coors Beer Twins, right? This is how we sell beer. So women, that's, you're not selling to women there. All right, so, but I have to say that beer has started to progress beyond that. I mean, even the likes of Anheuser-Busch have, have started to incorporate a more progressive view in, in the way they, uh, they sell beer. And certainly craft brewers have too. The Brewers Association has uh, made diversity a key part of its message. Uh, they brought on a diversity chief. They've also said, and I found this pretty interesting, that they will no longer publicize beers that have sexist names, things that are sort of demeaning to women. Oh, okay. So you're talking, it's not, it's not the overall company name, but you make a label and you make yeah, it. Yeah, well, okay. the big one. Well, we all know a Raging Bitch uh, is one of the ones that a lot of people point. Really? They're not going to put a lot of money behind that, yeah, eh? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so they have also tried to specifically market beers to women. Stupidly. Yes. Let me give you a couple. 2009, Molson Coors launches, I believe it's pronounced anime, I'm not sure. It is a trio of ultra-filtered lemon and rose-flavored bloat-resistant lagers <laughs> with a Bell Epoque Lobo and a $3 million marketing budget. It was pulled from the supermarkets after nine months. Bloat-resistant. Bloat I love resistant. that. Bloat-resistant. Exactly. Yeah, okay. 2011, Carlsberg, big international brewer, launches Eve, a brand of pastel-covered shanties 
It says it's still available in Switzerland, but that's all. Wow. The, the drink was meant to be enjoyed in a champagne glass to emphasize its aspirational qualities. Is it any wonder that women turn their back on beer when they get approached like that? Women have, you know, in my estimation, actually better uh, taste buds than, than men do. They do recognize flavors much more readily than men do. They're just that as right? able. Is that yeah, bio, actually, biology? There's, yeah, there's really? been scientific research on this and purely anecdotal research on my be. part too. Uh, but they will, you know, women like a good stout just as much as a guy does. All right, so two old idiot guys, how do you market beer to women? What's the answer? Uh, I think, first of all, don't demean them, don't patronize women. I mean, when a woman comes into a bar and she orders something like a nice, strong 12% barley wine, don't say, you know, Missy, can you, can, are you sure you can drink that beer? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little out of your league, young lady. Oh, well, that's not going to work? No, it won't work. Oh, and also, it's guys who happen to hang out at bars, don't try to mansplain beer. Do not tell them, you know, what's... You know, do not try to explain to a woman, or anybody really for that matter, what the hops are or, or what the, uh, the, you know, how the, the, the beer was brewed. Women often know this already. I believe what you're saying is treat them equally. Imagine that, really. That's concept. the way we should be. Well, I will give you this to close. There was a Nielsen survey done uh, in the last couple years that found women from age 21 to 34 account for just about 15% of the craft beer market which may not sound like a lot, but it actually is over-indexing, meaning it's a larger percentage than their percentage of the overall population. So younger women, again, 21 to 34, are drinking craft beers, presumably enjoying craft beers, and you don't have to sell it to them in a pink bottle. Right. Well, thankfully, you know, two guys talking about this, we actually are going to talk to somebody a little bit later uh, in this show we about are. this issue. Coming up, we're going to talk to Jen Yingling, who is a woman who is taking this company into the future. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at Yingling. This is What's Brewing. Why walk when you can fly? Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. Welcome back to What's Brewing. As you can clearly tell, we are at the Yingling Brewing Company in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, America's oldest brewery. Delighted to be joined now by Jen Yingling, Sixth generation? Sixth Am I right? generation. Wow. Thank you, Glenn. And one yes. of four sisters who are moving forward, taking over here. You're the vice president of operations. And one of the requirements we have on What's Brewing is we make people bring us beer. Well, we came to you, but you brought us a new beer that you guys are doing. Tell us beer. about it. This is our Yingling Golden Pilsner. It is our first new year-round brew. Don't need that. In 17 years. These are twist-offs. I still like it. <laughs> I like it. A nice twist off yeah. when I forget my opener all the time. So this is a Yingling Pilsner, Golden Pilsner, uh, and it is gold as you can see. Good looking beer, this very is clear. a great complement to our core portfolio of lager, light lager, black and tan. Um, and this plays in the refreshment category. Cheers. 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 You do not introduce new beers very often, we right? You, you have the tried and true. What made you decide to go with a new one? We don't define ourselves a lot on innovation. Um, we feel like we have a great p core portfolio, but I think in this instance, we really listened to our consumers and saw that they were trending into this refreshment category. It was not an arena where we generally played. Um, so we, we developed about 18 months worth of development. What do you mean by that, the refreshment category? I mean, why, I, I mean, I think you know, good old Yingling Lager is refreshing. Yeah, I think when we refer to refreshment, we're thinking about beers that are lighter in color, lighter in flavor, um, very social, outdoors activities, that sort of thing, active lifestyle type mm -hmm. beers. And, um, and this Golden Pilsner, we feel, really hit the mark. So the question I've been wondering, and Glenn and actually I talked about this a little earlier, is 
How come you guys don't make an IPA? That would seem to be like the natural place where you, you any brewery would go these days. Yeah, IPAs, they're, they're hot brands right now. And our thinking is we make lagers really well. I mean, that's the backbone of, yeah. of what we make um, is our traditional lager, which is our flagship brand. So we stuck with that, with that line of thinking. And um, you know, we're really excited about this Golden Pilsner. Um, it's golden in color. We have the gold colors on our graphics and our labeling mm -hmm. really, really cues up the refreshment of the it's liquid. It's nice, actually, I enjoy it a lot. Um, I moved to Pennsylvania in 1987. Um, I moved from Michigan. I had never had a Yingling before. It was a new and fun thing for me. Yep. Felt, you know, I'm drinking the kind of local thing. And back then, there was kind of the big three, and then there were regional beers like yours, maybe Stroh's out in Michigan where I came from, things like that. Um, since then, the landscape changed. Now, since then, there have been a whole lot, obviously, the boom in craft beers. In a certain way, you're between that, right? You're not this giant multinational company and you're not the little corner craft beer. Where do you guys see yourself in that landscape? We're in a very unique position. And sometimes we refer to ourselves as a hybrid brewery because we are that type of regional brewer, which I don't know if there's too many, too many more breweries out there at that level. Size-wise, I would say we're comparable to, to Sam Adams. But again, we're very different companies and our business models are different. He's a national global company mm -hmm. and we're still we're in 22 states so you know we're very very humbled to think that we're you know the nation's leading craft brewer and yet we're only in in 22 states so we've got a lot of runway ahead of us how big are you in terms of right here in Pottsville how many people work here employ in Pottsville grand total like throughout our footprint we have about 350 employees in Pottsville we're a little over 100 so it's a pretty good sized employer for good the size. of the woods yeah, we yeah. have our historic brewery where we are right now and then we have our what we refer to as our new brewery across the road uh, so you up coming up on your 190th anniversary what what do you got going uh, next year for that uh, beer drinkers can look forward to yeah so our 190th anniversary is a huge milestone for us we have um, we have some surprises that you know will happen throughout the year um, we're looking at uh, hosting a, a big event in April, um, bringing folks on site, different media folks, consumers, retailers, that sort of thing. We have our, um, our new marketing campaign, which is called Spread Your Wings. So that'll be rolling around and just, um, just turning over into its second year. I've started seeing some of those spots for Spread Your Wings. What's the idea behind that? So the idea is kind of, and, and it, a lot of it goes back to my sisters and I, sort of coming into this transitional role and learning to spread our wings in this leadership role. And also looking at consumers too. Like, don't be afraid to to take a step and um, and spread your wings and do something that you didn't think was possible. And I know you're involved in. And I may get the name wrong. Red, white, and blue. Old Glory, right? A local, it is. big local event. Tell us about that. Yeah. So Team Red, White, and Blue. We partnered with them this year, and it, it has to do with our Loggers for Heroes campaign, where we support military veterans, current active duty military members, and and also their family members. So Team Red, White, and Blue hosts this annual Old Glory relay where they, they carry Old Glory. They start in Boston, Massachusetts in September, on September 11th, and they travel across the country to San Diego and conclude there on Veterans Day in November. So I was very humbled and fortunate to be a part of that race when it went from Allentown to Philadelphia last month. And it was just You very, ran in it? Very, I ran. I ran, ran, I ran for Good a couple for you. Of miles. And it was very, like... You know, very, very emotional because you, you know, you had the veterans there mm -hmm. and supporters that it was just very a rewarding experience. And get to cool down with a, uh, a cold. A cold yingling after my yes, run. Exactly. Yes. Good <laughs> move. Well, Jen, thank you so much. Thanks for hosting us today. We've really enjoyed us. Thanks, thanks for, being uh, here. for this beer, this new Golden Pilsner. Thank you. Really good stuff. And thanks to everybody for watching. We will see you next week. We're going to be right back here at Yingling. You like the beer so much, we've got to come back next week. We'll see you then on What's Brewing. What's Brewing? Brought to you in part by Mongo Makers. Powered by the Valley Forge Tours and Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board.